I remember I was drinking a lot of like soda and stuff and I was thirsty all the time. So my mom called my pediatrician. The pediatrician said, come now. Took her to the doctor. He did a quick urine test and then they put her in intensive care. It was kind of scary because I thought I was going to die. My reaction to my diagnosis was, I think, shock, first of all, because you're 22, you're really healthy, and then all of a sudden you find out you have this really serious disease that you're going to have to monitor every day for the rest of your life. It's been in my family uh, since I can remember. And, you know, when Andy got it, I just felt, uh, felt awful. At night, it's always a guessing game. Do I need to eat something before I go to bed? How much insulin did I take earlier? If they go low at night, it gets really, really dangerous. The most daunting thing about it was realizing that this is not going to change. It will be a part of Sarah's life for the rest of her life. When a family is told your child has diabetes, it's a life-changing diagnosis. But then at midnight, she drops it again. UCSF is one of the premier places uh, for diabetes. I mean, for a guy your size, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Our patient care is always ranked in the top five in the country. Our science is always ranked in the top five in the country. We're the only institution that has both. Over the last 10 years, I think we have succeeded in building one of, if, if not the best, diabetes center in, in the United States. I think what makes the Diabetes Center special is that it's an integrated research unit attacking a disease from multiple directions. You need to have immunologists, you need to have cellular biologists, you have to have molecular biologists. The concept of the Diabetes Center was to bring all those people together so that they could formulate new ideas and new approaches to the problem. At the core of our center, is really a group of investigators that are trying to understand how the disease works and then taking that knowledge and applying it towards a cure. 85 is our number, 85. That's how about a clementine, goldfish, and a piece of chocolate? Yeah. And a glass of milk. Whoa. Okay. All right. I guess that it's just kind of annoying, like that I can't just eat what I want to. I actually have to like think about what I'm eating and check and like measure it out. You buzzing? Like if I'm at a party or something, I have to like count out like M&Ms or goldfish or whatever before I eat them instead of just like eating some. I have to really think about it first. Diabetes is the only condition that I know that is not managed by the doctor. It's actually managed by the family. The healthcare team role is to simply educate the family on how to do it, provide the learning process, and provide the guidance and the support, both emotionally and medically. So I woke up yesterday at 93. And what time was that? At 7. One of the best parts of being treated for diabetes at UCSF is that they really focus on the teaching aspect of it and just help you learn how you can better manage your diabetes. And so your insulin to carb ratio is like 1 to 18, or? You know, if a person without diabetes thinks about food, their pancreas will start to secrete insulin. I have to do that myself. I didn't think about that till now. The challenge with insulin injections is it's almost impossible to mimic what the body does so well, which is make just enough insulin at just the right time to control your blood sugar. So we try to develop a drug that would shut down the destruction of the insulin producing cells. Right after I was diagnosed, my mother actually found an announcement for a trial that was going on um, for a drug called an anti CD3 monoclonal antibody, which is a mouthful, but it basically was an attempt to preserve some of your ability to make insulin. At the time of diagnosis with diabetes, you may have about 15 to 40 percent of your capacity to make insulin. So the goal of the study was to try and preserve that remnant. And we asked if we look at 12 people who were given the drug for two weeks versus 12 people that never got the drug, at one year, what did we see? The people who got the drug made a lot more insulin and their blood sugar didn't go as high 
is the ones that hadn't gotten the drug. So you came in at a point where we already had some initial results from the study? Yeah. Andy was just uh, on the cusp of puberty when he entered the study. And what's happened for Andy is it's uh, time has stood still. I'm still producing some amounts of insulin. I'm taking relatively small amounts for someone my size and who eats like I do and just living my lifestyle. I feel like I'm just a little bit different than most diabetics in, in a good way. I'm, you know, the trial has definitely helped me and I feel healthier because of it. So how in the world did you stumble into that field? So we learned a lot of things from the anti cd 3 studies, but it's not the solution. For a diabetic, once the insulin producing cells have been destroyed, there's just no way to control your blood sugar anymore without having to take injections of insulin every day. So I think in the long run, the way we're going to be able to treat most people with type 1 diabetes is to replace those insulin producing cells we call islets by using either a graft of islets themselves, which we do now using cadavers, or by making new islets out of human embryonic stem cells. To do that, we're working with a number of private companies that have developed techniques for generating islets from stem cells. Embryonic stem cells can expand and can divide in an almost unlimited quantity. So instead of being able to treat perhaps 100 patients per year, our goal would be to be able to treat a large fraction of all existing diabetics. By working with UCSF, we will be able to get this product into clinical trials much more rapidly than we would have been able to all on our own. My father and mother both had diabetes. Uh, my father ended up needing a kidney transplant and I ended up donating my kidney. And I realized at that moment that we do need to do something about this disease. My aspiration from the very beginning is that we would put together a team that would be among the world leaders in trying to pull this off. And I think we have. What we've learned over the last 10 years is truly groundbreaking. They understand so much more now than they did uh, 30 years ago. I certainly have no doubt that to the extent there's cutting edge work being done out there and any benefit to be had, that we're getting it. I just really hope that the great progress they've made so far continues and that when we look back in 20 years, I can give you different answers to, <laughs> to how hard it is to live with this disease. I think what the Diabetes Center has provided is a location for scientists, researchers, clinicians to come together to become one community that's focused on one disease that's focused on a cure. They do make you feel really hopeful. It just seems like it's, it's coming. The pace is exponential and definitely in our lifetime we will see a cure to diabetes and I think UCSF is going to be a major player in actually figuring out how to do that.